Once again, at the very, very lovely corner of Glenwood and Lunt, we are in the heart of Rogers Park. We're up here on the stage at the Heartland Cafe, where every Saturday morning we bring you another edition of Live from the Heartland Radio. This is Michael James, your host for this morning's edition. It is the 7th of March in the year 2009, in the first year of Barack Obama's presidency. And we are uh, here with uh, three wonderful guests today. All of them are my friends and... That means I can ask them anything I want. I will have uh, Clemson track coach uh, Gordon Thompson will be up first, and then we're going to have Danny Postal talking about the Revolutions Conference taking place at Northeastern Illinois University. And we'll wind up the show with Paul Drouse on his way from Michigan, who will talk about the economic and social climate in a state that's been hit by hard times. All right. Good morning to everybody out there in WLUW listening land. Uh, here we go. Good morning to you, Gordon Thompson. Good morning, Chicago. It's great to have you back, Coach. Those of you who don't know Gordon and haven't heard him on here before, he's a very eloquent uh, spokesman in the field of track and field and uh, other social and political issues. He was a coach at Loyola University during their glory years of track and field with a number of uh, all Americans under his tutelage, so to speak, and then he went off to DePaul, and then he went to the warmer climates of Clemson down in South Carolina, where he is the uh, cross-country coach and the, what else do you do down there? I'm the distance coach. I coach the the endurance aspect of track and field, which is uh, 800 meters, which is pretty much a sprint event, and all the way up to 10,000 meters, which is... 6.2 miles, long running, and yeah, I enjoyed my time at uh, Loyola University, 15 years there, and always uh, admire the social structure of the university, and uh, was, we were able to have quite a bit of fun. Well, we are on Loyola University's community radio station, and uh, we're glad to have you back. Uh, let me ask you this. I've never asked you this when you've been a guest on the show, which is once or twice a year whenever you come back to Chicago. Uh how did you get into track and track and field, <clears throat> and what did you actually do in that in yourself in track and field before you were a coach? Well, like most artists and musicians, I was born into track and field. Um, my father was a track and field athlete. My older sister was an outstanding hurdler before w any opportunities for women existed scholastically. So in high school, she was on the field hockey team but really didn't have an opportunity to compete in either high school, formal high school competition or college. My dad actually created a University of Delaware uh, team and solely sponsored one athlete, my sister, to compete at the National Collegiate Championships when Delaware didn't sponsor uh, track and field as a sport for women. And uh, my sister won the National Collegiate Championship back in 1976 for University of Delaware with a hand screened on shirt, you know, saying Delaware that my dad made. And yeah, it was a home, it was uh, a family fair. That's and how I got she started. She almost went to the Olympics. She just missed <clears throat> in the Olympic trials. She did. 1976 <laughs> was uh, Olympic trials. And uh, she finished fifth in the 100-meter hurdles. And uh, so, yeah. Well, well Gordon missed. Thompson, what was your sport? You were a steeplechase guy, so you splashed around in the water. Yeah. Tell us what the steeplechase is for those people who don't know and how you did and where you went to college. Well, steeplechase originally is a, a horsing event. Obviously, we all know about the, the grand. Horsing night. around. Yeah, horsing around. So it's a, it is an endurance event started uh, by Englishmen in the, in the 1800s where – Benning, betting gentlemen uh, didn't want to risk the health of their horses in a very rainy uh, climate, so they they ran from one steeple to another steeple, which is a town center, you know, the spire of a church rising above the forest canopy. So from one steeple to another, from one town to another, that was a steeple chase. And uh, uh, betting gentlemen, they started that running in a running pursuit um, back in the 1850s. And yeah, it's a th informally now in the Olympic Games, 3,000 meters, 
35 barriers, seven of which have a water jump, 12-foot pit of water right after a three-foot barrier. So there is a great deal of calamity. A lot of people wipe out. It's the NASCAR of track and field where there are a lot of wrecks in the process. So that adds to the excitement of the sport and the drama of the sport. So that was the the event that I did, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. You did it in high school and in college? Well, it's not a high school event. It's a collegiate and a, a professional. So you were a, a cross-country guy in high school? That's right, and a and, miler. And then you went to, uh, what's your best time in the mile? I actually saw you on the Loyola track indoors 13 times for a mile run a, uh, I think a 436 or something. Well, I don't want to talk about me. Any the, What they have over or there. Just for a minute we're talking just about for a second. What they have over at Loyola is what in the late 80s, we didn't have a track at Loyola University. So we built a board banked track up in the balcony of Alumni Gym, $3,000 worth of lumber. And uh, thankfully, the athletic director at the time uh, said, yes, if you can do it, go ahead. You got my blessings. And um, so we we t- built a very nice venue. And, yeah, I ran a mile up there to be the inaugural mile, just a solo mile. And it was pretty slow. And uh, but yeah, I was the first. Sub- so you went to the University of Florida, and that's, that's where right. you became a steeplechaser. That's correct. So how did you do? How were you as an athlete? Average, shitty to 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 average at best. Average to best. Excuse me. And then how did you get into coaching? Well, my sister actually started was a head of women's track coach after I'd already attended school, uh, was ready for graduation, and she became the head women's track coach at the University of Florida. And um, thankfully, through nepotism, she asked me to be her distance coach, and I um, I accepted and was really in, into it, and we had a lot of success right off the bat. Here I am, a 23-year-old guy coaching uh, Division One. Women's cross country was a blast, and we finished seventh in the nation first year, so got got a pretty good reputation as a uh, a distance coach at a young age, and was hired by Northwestern University in 80, 1983, and really was disenchanted with the athletic environment at Northwestern. So uh, when the opportunity became available at Loyola, just one year later, I hopped on it to become a head coach there, and. And loved, loved uh, directing my own programs ever since. And you had some really hot shot runners in your day. Uh, Eddie Slokowski, Andre Fambe. Uh, you had a bunch of guys. All from, at that time, the 312 area code, which we had stenciled on our shirts. It's just a nice Chicago group of men and women that were um, good, solid, blue-collar people that were had high work ethics, had high degrees of, wanted to go get their degree, great families, and uh, we turned it into something. And the present coach here, Rick Wemple, is continuing the trend. He's done an outstanding job of recruiting fine middle distance and distance runners to Loyola. And the, and the, really the tradition started with Tom O'Hara back in the, in the 60s when Tom O'Hara broke the world record for the indoor mile while as, as a student for Loyola. It, it just changed the entire uh, uh, the entire scene for the university and what the future would be. So I was really rolling off in 1963 when I was coaching here uh, 20 years after that. 